that's the normals. Boy, that's the first time I've heard that. I'm sorry to say that, but it is the first time I've heard it. Uh, the normals are not the normal. Not the song TVOD. Not the TVOD group. That mixed up. That's without an S. This band has an S on the end of its name and doesn't have an English accent. Right? Quite right. <laughs> where, where, where are you from? Uh, we're all from New Orleans. That's in Louisiana. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thanks, John. How, now, that, you said that was not a new, uh, a new single. That's, no, that's about a year and a half old. How long has the band actually been in existence? Um, November 1977. 77. Now, I would say, just from what I know about having, you know, ever, having lived in the South for five or six years, that what we just heard ain't exactly basic Southern rock and roll. Uh, did you find it difficult to gain wide acceptance playing the type of music that you play, especially in 1977? It took a while. Um, it, it was, we sort of wrote on... Uh, <laughs> the uh, when the Sex Pistols came down there, that, yeah. that, cre that created a lot of stir down there, and we were doing a lot of um, uh, copy material at the time. Mm -hmm. Damned and the uh, Sex Pistols and the Jam and the Ramones, Clash, and Ramones. Ramones. How did this happen to you? Yeah, I mean, this is not this is not a stuff. southern thing to do at the time. <laughs> I mean, wasn't southern music pretty much Allman Brothers to Leonard Skinner yeah, to so Confusion? They had, they had um, um, Charlie Daniels. A lot of different kind of people around there, and in, in New Orleans, you know, there's got a lot of people that like that. But New Orleans is. Um, sort of a continental city it's like french and spanish and they've got a lot of different things there and they're n it's surrounded by swamps so it doesn't it's not really a typical southern city it's not it couldn't have happened if you were living in biloxi then probably not uh, no. or even no, Asheville no, or nothing like that we allowed your friends that can't even happen in austin or houston i don't think was it possible at one point in your in the career of the normals to uh have all of your fans in one hall at the same time i mean all of the people that were interested in this sure, kind of music the even in the uh, it, now in New Orleans, have you been back lately? Mm. Uh, we're going back in like three weeks. It's supposed to be a, a real big thing. But <laughs> they're on. It's good, talking it's about it on the radio good. now. Because we've yes? been down in months. So it's, it yeah. was, we got a lot of press while we were down there because it was um, there wasn't anything else happening besides us for one, and uh, they didn't know whether bands to import from uh, up here. You know, they didn't know what bands were good from mm -hmm. the north. A lot of the clubs down there don't didn't know. And uh, the atmosphere in New Orleans, the Mardi Gras atmosphere and the party atmosphere, and the, um, it was conducive to um, what we were doing and, and the uh, attitude that, uh, I guess, New Wave Music and Punk was uh, trying to say also. It's like conducive to the natural element of New Orleans because it's a sort of a free-for-all party town anyway. It still took a little while to build up um, a good following. Yeah, there's a lot of they play punk, so they've got to be bad. A lot of that for a while. Really? But, um, yeah. Is is new wave music more readily accepted down there now that you guys have have made it in, in the town? So. Definitely. Like, yeah. what, is radio playing the Clash? Or are they playing the Ramones? No. Or? No. Well, there's one after the Go see the band. Private stations too. Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple. The Comet stations, couple, yeah. two lane stations, uh, plays a lot. You wouldn't believe we'll all the bands the now band. that they used to do copy material like a Zeppelin and things. Now they're yeah, they copying new wave. Yeah. So many, so many new bands since we've left. So what's the radio station in there? NOE or something like yeah, that? Yeah, RNO and NOE. Yeah. Those are the two biggest ones. Yeah, and they don't touch that, huh? Oddly, all the cheap tricks. It's still yeah. real Joe Jackson, but that's not, not that's not saying anything. No. Yeah, nothing to scream about. Well, we have some. We have some new. Well, I want to ask you what possessed you to come to New York City, uh, but uh, let's hear some new things. We, you brought a, brought a tape along. That has yeah, these some, are some things we did in uh, Memphis. Memphis. And with uh, Mike Stewart, he uh -huh. was producing it. Mm -hmm. And is this re very recent? Um, the Memphis thing yeah. was about the last three months, I think. Within okay. the last three months. Here, let's hear some new music from the normals.
go back, hide your face, cause you're back Me by the Normals, then it was A Hard Day's Night by the Beatles, Ain't That a Shame by Brian James, and another Normal song called Shot Down. And our guest disc jockeys tonight are the Normals. In fact, we should find out who the Normals are. If you're facing your radio now, <coughs> let's go left to right. Left to right. Mike Fell. What do you play, Mike? I play drums, do bogles. Are you from New Orleans? Yes. Charlie Hansen, and I uh, play uh, lead guitar and vocals. And yeah, David Bruton. Lead guitar, vocals, mostly rhythm, though. How can you both be lead guitar? Oh, yeah, we switch around. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't believe him. He plays uh, better than me, anyway. All right. <laughs> I don't like it. Steve Walters up um, bass. Just bass, no vocals. Okay. Anyway. Has One the band four. always been a four-piece? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did it happen to uh, finally come to New York? I asked you that just before we went to the record. Why would a band becoming successful in New Orleans want to possibly come to where it's cold? <laughs> yeah, really. In case you haven't noticed, it's 32 out. I think the I problem noticed. was just, just standing in New Orleans being, you know, like celebrities of the city, didn't do anything because there's no record companies were about to come down there. Or there's none really existing in New Orleans that were going to do anything for us. Was the idea from the very start to record the stuff and actually be a, a recording band? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was, you know, after hearing, you know, once the Ramones came out with an album, the Sex Pistols, we figured, you know, that I think it'd be a good idea, too, you know. Okay, once you get your base in a city like New Orleans, how do you get bookings across the country? Well, what we did was uh, we opened up all the like, incoming acts, and usually they brought, like, people like Miles Copeland Sauce, and um, uh, everybody that came through with their band, we'd open them up, and we'd get a real good reaction. And um, they'd give us names of people they knew in New York, and we'd call them up, and the word just gradually spread, and... Um, not that we were doing anything with Miles Copeland right now, we're not. Um, so you all moved to New York at the same time? Mm -hmm. We came up here as a band. We talked to um, a few booking agents and uh, passed around a few tapes and just generally doing probably what everybody else does when they come here. Do you all live in the same house? Yeah, we live in an apartment. Not me. Except for this place. We just moved out. We had to kick the bass player out of the apartment. Uh, <laughs> the apartment just took Something the apartment about your sneakers. I don't know what the problem was. It needs my, my sneakers are too dirty. <laughs> yeah, they really are. I said, you smell anything, you know what it is. <laughs> now, the band's been playing around here in the city, right? Yeah, last we played we just about every place I can think of. Tracks, Haraz, and uh, we played CBGB's the last time we were up here. And, um, but this time, we did, this time we did Max's, which last time we wanted night. to do, but we didn't get to do. We did Max's quite a few times, and Haraz, I think, three times. Mm -hmm. and, uh, tracks twice. Tracks twice. So is there is there a new wave audience developing south of the Mason-Dixon line? Is it starting to happen, or is it strictly a, big, a, a fairly there large city thing in pockets? Um, there is one in New Orleans. How about Atlanta? Yeah, there's Atlanta, Atlanta. Yeah, I yeah. was in Atlanta for a couple of days, and there's a big New Wave audience. 
what they need to do is they need to have uh, bands touring down there more often to keep it going, you know, because uh, it's, it's a lot of acts just don't feel like taking, there's a lot more space between each city in the South. Mm-hmm. A lot of space of nothingness, you know, whereas up here you can travel 200 miles in any direction and hit another big city. Yeah. Yeah. And so they just don't feel like traveling 400 miles between each city. It's just a lot tougher on the road to do that. But yeah. what they need is to have constant bands touring down there to keep it going. But it does seem to be a, a growing development. Oh, they would definitely. Of, yeah. I was really surprised mm-hmm. we went outside of New Orleans and uh, you said you were you used to stay in Biloxi. We played in um, Bay St. Park. Louis. We played in Bay St. Louis. We played in Bay St. Louis and they had more uh, punk magazines. It's like Johnny Rotten, all that cover and stuff like that. In Bay St. Louis and in a small hick town outside of New Orleans, and they did inside New Orleans. Like you go to a grocery store and you look at it's the like magazine, they all think right? it's all punk magazines. You know, they all so think I mean, it's at least really hilarious. Obviously buying the magazine. Oh yeah, all punks, all right. <laughs> <laughs> they think it's great. So that was, that was yeah. like in late, what, early 78, it was real crazy. Did you have problems getting records down there? I mean, like you're, you're here of all these bands and stuff like that. Did, when you walked into a local record shop, did you have a problem finding a Clash album or something like that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. There was only like two record stores and if they couldn't order it or they sold out, you had to wait, you know. I used to order my records through the mail, only way I could get them. Hmm. You know, cause all the good stuff is here, you know, in New York and California. And uh, y'all get shipments from England. Most of the New Way came from England. And I, you know, when New Orleans was getting in a New Way. It wasn't, there were none of these groups of signs in America. You only had the Ramones and the Sex Pistols, you know. Then uh, obviously bands like Boomtown Rats get signed and uh, things like that, and everything starts clicking. Hmm. So now who does, who writes one. most of the songs in uh, the normals? David writes most of it. Th- has it been a problem having the normal existing or do they no, in no, fact no. still <laughs> exist <laughs> were you aware of them when you picked your name no, no we were no, together no. we had the name before them and then uh, we put out a single that single um with almost ready on it and a friend of mine brought over this thing he got through the mail he said look at this it's called the normal it mm. doesn't sound exactly the same as ours i guess you can <laughs> no they're pretty and different sounded, yeah it's like i was at and, um, 16 speed or something it was like we were together for about a year and with the name and all and working. We have heard you about been, it. Have, called uh, Sire and they said they they heard think the, band, the band was even together anymore. Normal. The normal. Yeah. No, I, that, I think maybe they aren't. I, TVOD I, is the only thing I've been. Yeah. Warm Leatherette. I've I heard that the, is, if this is true, that the guy who did the TVOD single is calling himself something else now. Like each single looks like it's going to be something different. Hmm. But uh, there's also there's another band in Los Angeles calling itself the Normals. Yeah, that's, there's a new band. We heard of a couple well, if you've used it in interstate commerce, so <laughs> we all, we never <laughs> you can get a trademark. We've already got an airplay out Some Ogle so. Esquire. <laughs> right. okay. Our guests are the normals, and let's let's go back to some music now. Uh, maybe the Sex Pistols and uh, the Ramones and the Jam weren't always available in New Orleans, but uh, how about the Dave Clark Five? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Uh, the, he was one the character we encountered last time. He's like, oh, yeah. I couldn't believe him, you know. It was like there's some bands from Houston wanted me to give them some promotional material for like that. some bands from Houston to go up there. And uh, as soon as I mentioned, you know, somebody's name was representing these bands, he goes, no, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about it. He could give a shit. I mean, you know, he could give a damn about it. And, uh, but this oh, isn't You don't need to worry about that, really. Yeah, You're and, uh... Worst offenders. <laughs> nothing ever happens. Profanity over the air. Yeah, well, it wasn't intentional, but <clears throat> I don't know. It's, it's uh, I guess it's a never dull moment. <laughs> 